Hey everyone, it's Innocent here and today we're looking at 10 tips and tricks in Photoshop that you probably don't know. So without any further ado, let's jump right into the video. Before we dive into the video, please hit on that subscribe button and don't forget to turn on the notification bells. Now let's get into Photoshop. So coming up at number one will be this particular interface. What people don't really observe is that we have a whole lot of different workspace in photoshop so starting from the essentials to a whole lot like the painting photography typography and a whole lot and if you're having 3d you might be having 3d also over there anytime you come into photoshop you have to make sure that your workspace is something that fits you for example if you are a new beginner or new in cs6 you just have to switch into cs6 or better still the essentials that is something that is going to really help you so much and then in case you sit behind somebody's computer and then you find something like this let's say the person's workspace is in 3d or painting all you have to do is you have to go over here select essentials or better still if you are not having all the things in essentials you go to reset essentials and then you are good to go okay so let's go to number two don't you think the dark background in photoshop can be so boring well you can change it the first step is you can right click at the back over here you right click and you can switch it off to something light gray or medium gray that is if you want to use it during the daytime in the nighttime but the super fun thing is here is that you can change it to any color of your choice this is it you just have to go to your foreground color and you set in the color that you want to change it to so you go to Pick your paint bucket tool, you hold shift and then you left click at the background and then boom, you are good to go. So any color that you choose, perhaps any color of your choice and then you go to pick your paint bucket tool, hold shift and then you left click at the background and then it changes for you. If you don't want it and then you want to switch back to the default color, all that you have to do is right click at the background and you go to default. So coming up at number three is changing the opacity. So for instance, if you add a gradient to this particular image that we have over here and then you click OK, OK, the opacity currently is 100%. And if you click on the button over here, you can obviously decrease the opacity. But how about if you can go straight to tapping anything on or any number on the selected layer for instance you press on five and this one is going to change straight away to 50 percent for you it is as simple as that it doesn't only apply to the opacity if you hold shift and then four for instance it is going to decrease the fill also for you to 40 percent so if you want to just go straight to the opacity you tap on any number say eight and it takes you to 80 percent and then if you want to change the fill you just have to hold shift and then you add the number to it so for instance nine and then it takes you to 90 percent super cool if you're not that much a big fan of using the pen to, to take off background images and perhaps you are a big fan of using the polygonal lasso too or the magnetic lasso too well you might have experienced this where all of a sudden you are making selection and then boom it just turns out to be something like this wow this can be super hectic now i've got a tip for you okay so when you're using anything like the polygonal lasso 2 or the magnetic lasso 2 to make selection for instance you are going around like this don't just mind how it is going rough i'm just using this so if you're going around like this and all of a sudden instead of going through the very edges that you want you just mistakenly double click and then you have something like this so for instance you are going to this part and then you just mistakenly double click like this at this point you don't have any other option than to either deselect the whole selection that you've made and then you start over again but then i've got a very simple trick for you when it happens this way for instance if you if you've gone around most part of your image so what that you have to do is you have to press ctrl shift and then i and then you are going to invest the selection so after investing the selection you can zoom in a, a little bit and then you go for your eraser tool so you can use the eraser tool to clean off the areas that you've selected already so the invest selection basically is going to invest so you have to take your time 
that you don't cut really deep into the places that if not cut or you've not selected over yet so you just have to make sure you go something like this and then you can clean off all this area for instance so if you've done a larger part of it you can clean off all this area sorry you can clean off all this area now you might be asking whether you're going to have a very fine edge if you don't have a very fine edge i have this tip also for you you have to go to the layer thumbnail over here and then you press control and then you select the whole image okay and then afterwards you are going to invest that one also so control shift and then i and then you are going to invest that selection also so after investing it you have to pick any of your polygonal lasso tools and then you are going to refine edge you go to the smooth over here and then you can set this one also to something 0.05 and then after hitting on the delete button a couple of times you can see that we are having a very smooth edge over there so after making the mistake of doing the wrong selection that's not the end you can do this to to basically get a better result i don't really know if you've come across something like this like when you have one particular photoshop document and you have such tons of layers on it and you want to sample just one of them from it so basically what you can do from this one is imagine we are here and then i quickly want to go to this particular watch that is the smart band the smart band that i reviewed in my previous video all that you have to do is you hold the control on your keyboard and then you click on that particular smart band and quickly it takes you over there so i can basically scroll to the last part of this over here and then still when i hold control and then click on this particular background it is going to take me straight to the background let me add this quick tip that if you want to show only this particular background also and leave the rest behind all that you're going to do is you're going to hold alt and then click on the eye over here and almost all of them every other layer on this particular document is going to turn off and then you're going to see only the background and in the same way if you hold alt and then you click on it again the rest of them are going to show so that is just a quick tip for you moving on let me quickly use this to explain this quick guide they are super awesome these rulers that you see over here when you press ctrl and then r you're going to turn off and on of the rulers they are super helpful so you can drag them by yourself over here so you wouldn't even know whether your smart guide or your guideline is in the middle so you can go to view and then new guide and then you can set it vertical or horizontal so basically you just you can input in something like 50 percent this means that it's going to share the document into 50 50 half so he's going to input a guideline over here this means that from this part to the very end of here a document and from this part to the very end of this document are almost the same so you can just quickly drag it and drop it to anywhere that you want additionally you're not limited to only this color so you can double click on any of the guidelines and it'll take you to the preferences and then you can change how you want to see your guidelines so let me say i want to go for green and then i click okay so i think green looks so good on this particular so that is it for guidelines one of the very keys that is so underrated in photoshop at least to my knowledge is the eyedropper tool so basically if you want to sample any color of your choice from any image well you can just go for the eyedropper tool i for the shortcut and then you can sample any color and then it's automatically set to your foreground color but then what if the color that you're looking for is outside of your photoshop for instance it is on my desktop right over here so the tip is you start from your photoshop and then you start dragging it outside of your photoshop and then basically it goes out of your photoshop and even on your desktop it can sample any of the color so if i go to sample the youtube color over here it samples it and then when i come back to my photoshop I'm going to find it to be that of my foreground color so irrespective of where it is you just have to start from your document and then you drag it outside of your photoshop so let's sample something from here and then when you get back to the photoshop it is going to be there for us so that is it for the eyedropper too if you want to sample a color from outside of your photoshop document i'm so very sure that because of control plus j duplicating test images and other stuff 
isn't a big deal for you but that's fine how about if you want to duplicate something more like the layer style okay so the alt and then the dragon is super underrated for instance if i select the methodist logo over here and then i hold alt i can easily make a duplicate out of it like this and then if i leave it i can still make a duplicate out of it it's super quick super awesome especially when you are duplicating one thing a quick tip is that if you have something like a layer style that you want to duplicate for instance i have a couple of layer styles on this positive impact that is only shadow let me go for something more this impact over here i have a gradient an outer glow which i've turned it off and then the drop shadows so let me turn on the outer glow let's just use this for instance and then if i want to copy this whole layer style onto that of the positive impact there are two options so you right click and then you go to copy layer style and then you go to the positive impact and then you right click and then you go to paste layer style so basically all the layer style on the impact is going to be affected on that of the positive but the simplest way to go by this is since these two are so close to each other you can just select this particular impact hold your alt and then you drag only the effects that is the effects onto the positive and then when you leave it boom this is what you have so the alt plus dragging doesn't only affect images and logos and text you can also use it to copy or duplicate layer styles and layer effects onto other layers with that being said let's quickly take a look at how to make your own gradient overlay so basically you go to blending options and then you can set your own gradient overlay so this particular gradient is since set in photoshop or it's not a standard photoshop gradient so what if you are able to come up with your own unique gradient is it going to be lost after just using it on that particular way no you can just save this so for instance i have this particular gradient that i set and then i can scroll down to the latter part of all the gradients that i have over here of course some of them are custom ones that i downloaded from online but then this one in particular if you really want to save it all that you need to do is go to the new over here and then you click on new and then it is saved for you even if you don't apply it to your test the next time you come to your gradient overlay and then you select your gradient and then you scroll down to the very last part that is it you have it over here so you can make some couple of changes to this one say for instance this and then you change this one also and then you have that and then you go to the new over here and then you can save it and automatically it adds to the presets of your gradient overlay so to finish up with this video is a four in one tips but then i've grouped all of them into one the first one is if you if you hit on a tab you're going to almost hide everything from your photoshop at least you can do it for somebody who is not really into photoshop and then the person might be confused now if you add shift and then alt to it you're going to hide everything excluding the two panel over there and then you can see from the start of this video that i've been messing around with this foreground color so if you're somebody who likes painting and then if you are into layer mask and something like that you can quickly use d to reset the foreground and the background color and then also you can use x to switch on between the foreground and the background color so if you have a particular color over here and then if you quickly want to switch it up you just have to use the s and then you are able to switch this one also up that'll be all for this video thank you so much for sticking around to watch this video let me know in the comment section if you would want to see more of these tips and tricks and then hacks in photoshop once again thank you so much for staying around and watching this video please don't forget to like and subscribe and then i'll see you in the next video it's innocent here and bye